Good morning, everyone. My name is Donna Miller, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Purse Power. And we're delighted that you're here. I think this is going to be a terrific show. Um, thank you so much, Case, for being here and for doing this. Um, I know you're an active participant. I think you've got some really important things to say. So <laughs> thank thanks again for being here. Um, again, quickly, Purse Power is working to help women use their massive purchasing power to drive positive change. We believe that if women who make 80% of all purchasing decisions would choose to buy from the companies that actively promote women and would do that in mass, that we could shatter glass ceilings and change lives. So that's what we're trying to do with Purse Power. And Jennifer Grigsby, who I see is on, is actually one of our investors and a key player in our company. Um, all right, so I'll introduce Case and then we'll go ahead and get into a presentation. And this is going to be interactive today. So Case has got something to show you and we'll have an active conversation. Uh, we probably need to go ahead and, I guess, take ourselves off video or something while you're presenting, Case. And then if people want to interact, they can go ahead and show their faces if they want to, or at least uh, take themselves off mute. How's sure. That? And I think um, there is the hand raising, or I think, is uh, available it was in meeting format. So if I see it, I'll, I'll definitely call on you if you have Look a question. Look for that too. Okay. Perfect. And if you don't Perfect. want to interrupt, you could just put your question in chat and I'll watch chat as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so Case Lane, hey Jane, uh, Case Lane is a writer, entrepreneur, podcaster, and the founder of um, Ready Entrepreneur, and she's also a podcast guest star. She's a former diplomat, consultant, and corporate executive, and she's been educated in communications, political science, business, law, and economics. And she's lived in, or studied, let's see here, in 11 countries and visited 100 more. Holy smokes, I need to get out there. <laughs> All right. Her, her, business, yeah, her. <laughs> her business prepares aspiring entrepreneurs to understand how to take advantage of technology and global resources to achieve lifestyle freedom and starting their own online, their own online businesses. Um, she is all about um, preparing for the future, which she believes is increasingly global, tech-focused, and entrepreneurial. And I think an awful lot of women are going the entrepreneurial route right now. So I think yeah. this is a key place to play. All right, Absolutely. guys, I want to give you a chance quickly before we get started to introduce yourselves, just who are you and what do you do and maybe where are you from? So um, Amy Kessler, would you start? Just go ahead and take yourself off mute and just introduce yourself. Hey there, um, I'm Amy Kessler. I'm in Edmond, Oklahoma, and um, I, uh, I, uh, have a network of vetted and valued executive coaches, and I specialize in taking the guesswork out of finding the right coach. And the name of my company is Potentia Coaches. Glad to be here, ladies. Thank you. Thank you for being here. All right, Jackie, would you introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, Jackie Bergney, uh, the name of my, um, I handle what we call, uh, my last name is Bergney. I have a consulting company. It's called Bergney Advisory. And I am a subject matter expert globally when it comes to insurance, mainly on the PNC side, uh, PNC reinsurance, um, more on the corporate headquarters side for several years, went off on my own the past couple of years. I'm also heavily involved with um, debt equity funding, as well as venture capital broadcasting. And I was introduced to all of you um, by my good friend, Ginger. Yay. So thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Okay, Jane, your turn. Okay, I'm Jane Bakendorf, and I am part owner. And well, in fact, what I am is marketing and sales director for a family ranch. And we raise grass finished beef and lamb and sell to the public. And we're in Oklahoma. Very good. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Susan, cheers. Susan, would you introduce yourself? <laughs> Oh, oh, I think we're, I think we're having trouble with the sound. I um, have a little problems with my internet. But in case you can, I'm Susan Chairs, an intellectual property lawyer from Washington, D.C. Perfect. And she does our trademark work, guys. She's fantastic. Um, Deborah. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Um, I'm Deborah Love Bradshaw, Master Certified Life Coach and Organizer, Speaker, Author. So <laughs> I assume that's what we're saying. I just signed in. Okay, perfect. Hey, um, if you guys aren't speaking, would you guys put yourself on mute? Uh, let's see here, Anita. Good morning, everyone. I'm Anita and uh, the owner of Be Great Global. And I am a uh, purpose strategist. I believe we all have a purpose, a reason for an ex our existence. And what I do is provide do-it-yourself training to help people do that. And I recently started day trading. Super, super excited about that. Day trading. Oh, very good. 
Very good. Hey, Ginger, glad to see you here. Yes, so glad to be here. Ginger Sloan, Edmond, Oklahoma. And I have been in the healthcare industry for the past 27 years. Um, currently, I am CEO of an electronic documentation company, as well as a telehealth company. Very good. Glad to see you. Glad to see you. Okay, Jennifer. She may just be one. Oh, there we go. Hey. Yeah, it's Jennifer Grigsby. Um, I am a purse power investor and Secretary of Economic Administration for the state of Oklahoma. Yay, I'm so glad to see you. Uh, let's see here, who have I missed? Joyce? Hi ladies, uh, my name is Joyce Coleman. I am the executive assistant to an executive director of a state agency called OCAST. Um, and I'm happy to be here and learn as much as I can. Very good. Thanks for joining us. Okay, I think, have I missed anyone? All right, I'm going to hand it over to you, Case. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Donna. It's great to be here. And just from here, I'm just going to switch now. I'm going to share my screen. So uh, I hope everybody can see it. If you can't see it, let me know <laughs> in, uh, in chat. It's great. I, I Just from your introductions, I know I hope that hopefully this will be great information for you because you should all be guest podcasting. It sounds like you all have great information to share based on your backgrounds. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today is the guest podcasting opportunity and how to find research and contact podcasts for an interview. Now, I could also uh, you know, speak about podcasts in general. I am a podcaster and I know there's a lot of different questions that come up around podcasting in general, but what we want to focus on today is guest podcasting. So, and in terms of what that means, what I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. So uh, I know the term podcasts have become so popular and, and everybody was talking about podcasts, especially in 2020 when, when things were locked down. But just to put it simply, it's streaming audio programs. It's 21st century radio. It is interviews, current events, true crime, education, entertainment, every topic you can think of. That's what's being discussed on podcasts. So if you have not thought about what role you could play and be a, on podcasts, just it is wild open. It's it's the greatest opportunity you have to get out and talk about any subject that you want to, because that's what's going on with podcasting right now. So if you don't know where to find it, there's a button probably on your iPhone or your smartphone. You could podcasts are free. So I don't know any major program that is uh, charging for podcasts. There are big podcasters now charging for premium services, but the actual podcast itself is free. And this is what makes it such a great marketing opportunity for you and a promotion opportunity for you because it's free to get started and it's growing rapidly so there are now last count maybe 2.7 million podcasts but i'll qualify that as we go along but what that means for you as somebody who wants to interview on podcasts and I, this is Listen Notes, which is one of the big podcast directories, and they have the disclaimer that they're not inflating this number, but um, you'll find out that once you start looking for podcasts that you can interview on, it's not quite 2.7 million, but it does, be, the fact that there are so many podcasts, it does create that much of a bigger opportunity for everybody who's interested in being on podcasts. So what is the podcast, the guest podcasting opportunity? Well, if, if you're a writer with a book to promote, and I heard at least one writer on there, if you're an entrepreneur with a product or service, if you're a public speaker with a message, you're a brand strategist, a marketer, you're an influencer, you want to grow your audience, you could be a professional, we're working for a corporation, but you want to get your company's message out there, products, services that you have, you should be guest podcasting. There are so many opportunities to do it, and it's just a very important way for you to be communicating about what you have to offer. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Case Lane, and I am, as Donna mentioned, I have had a few corporate careers. I've had, I was a diplomat in the Canadian Foreign Service, a management consultant for what is now the, one, of, one of the big three, and I was a corporate executive in Hollywood, and then I went to law school and started ebook self-publishing, so I'm a writer, and I got from there into all the other aspects of online business, I have blogs, podcasts, um, video, affiliate marketing, all of it, and I basically, all of that, I've been doing all the different, different activities in online business, helping aspiring entrepreneurs get started. I focus on people at the very, very beginning of the process who are just trying to learn what to do. And once you get started, 
one of the best ways to promote and go forward is through guest podcasting. It's, it's direct communication to people who come to you. So instead of, for example, paid ads where you have no idea, people are scrolling around and they're looking for cat videos or something, and your ad is interrupting them, in podcasting, the people, listeners, your potential audience are coming directly to you looking for the information you have to offer. You can expand your network and your subject area, as you'll see, as I'll show you some of the different podcast directories and how it works to find podcasts that you can speak on. You'll realize that so many people are out there in your industry and you can grow your network among people who are talking about what you want to talk about. You can grow your search and social media presence because once your name is on podcast, people start searching for your name, your interviews will pop up in the Google search and suddenly you, know, you have a bigger online presence than you had before. You create a permanent marketing asset. The reason there's millions of podcasts is because podcasts last forever. <laughs> there's a, the way it's set up right now, the podcast platforms, your, your, uh, your interviews are out there. People can go to them anytime. You can use them anytime. So that's a marketing asset that just continues to grow and live for you. And it's an excellent re referral resource for a third party. So let's say you want to start speaking and reaching out to speakers bureaus. You can point them to your podcast interviews and say, you know, here's five or six examples of how I speak in public. So it just gives you that an extra resource that you probably don't have now if you haven't been doing this. So we're going to talk about how to guest podcast. And I'm going to show you first just a couple of free services that exist that allow you to get started quickly if that's what you want to do. And then I'm going to talk about the process I created, the DIY guest podcasting process that I started. I actually was promoting a book in 2020 and I had done a marketing course that said something about guest podcasting, but they didn't really explain how to do it. And so I went and learned, you know, how to do it and, and figured out this process of my own. And my good friend, Nan McKay, the host of the Trailblazers Impact podcast, who many of you know, she was the one who said, well, I think other people want to have this information <laughs> about how to guest podcast. And so I ended up putting it together into this information that I have for you today. But I'll tell you first about some of these free services that you can just get started on and have a look about how you can just you know you could all start seeing what's out there and what the opportunities are because there are as i mentioned two million podcasts but there's no robust search engine that makes it easy for you to just say hey i am this person show me all the podcasts that would be good for me there's nothing like that every podcast directory and when i mentioned podcast directories that's any listing of podcasts that are available so there are directories that have, um, let's say, you know, by certain subject matter. Some, most directories have everything, but some are just certain subject matters. So you have that, those podcasts, the, those directories are the ones that are where you're going to look for podcasts, but they're all different. The categories and tags are limited. There's a lot of inactive shows, a lot of dead shows. And so that's going to be you know, what, what the challenge that you're facing going forward. So I'm just going to check here. I see that I'm going to check the chat just to see if, if these specific questions <laughs> that I have you have for me while I'm talking, but I'll go, go back and forth to it. I'll check I'll chat at the very end as well. So I'll just keep watching for that if you have questions. And then I think also, I, I've actually don't, I'm not showing, seeing everybody on the screen. So if you do have a, a question where you, you just want to um, save it to the end or just put it in the chat so that I will be checking chat every now and then. We'll do it that way. <laughs> okay. So now we know the challenge going forward. The biggest shows get all the news. You've maybe heard of some really big name podcasts. They get the priority. Uh, Apple says, we'll show you the top 100 podcasts and then say less relevant items are not displayed so the rest of the two million are not being displayed but what you want to do as you get into guest podcasting and you're reaching out to people and you're speaking on your specific subject you want to get beyond the top 100 podcasts of course we all want to be on the top 100 podcasts we want to be with the big celebrities and so on but we're all not going to get there because there's just not enough room for us right so you want to get beyond the top 100 to find the people who are speaking about your subject matter and where you have expertise there's value in the entire podcast list there's so many great shows you have an opportunity with a targeted audience because as I mentioned, people are going to the podcast looking for the information. So it's a much different audience. This is an active audience that they are specifically looking for the information you have to offer. You're building your direct connections with, with your industry. 
you get insight into the latest subject topics. You might not even realize the different things that people are speaking about on podcasts, and you have an opportunity for future collaborations with podcasters. So when you get beyond the top 100, you'll hear people talk about guest podcasting. They'll say, oh, just look at Apple to find podcasts or just look at Amazon. I'm not even going to, oh, I'll, wait, I'll show you Apple a bit, but the podcast directories I'll show you will give you the real information that you can use to actually find out the, which podcast would be great for you. All right, what I'm not going to talk about is the things that you should do before you get started, but I am going to mention them because it is important to be set up you know, properly when you're going to do some, to becoming a guest podcaster. The key thing is to know how to present your subject. So I know so many of you are, are subject matter experts and you have all this knowledge and experience and so on, but have you ever sat down for a spontaneous conversation live in a broadcast with questions firing back and forth. That's what you have to be thinking about. And you want to make sure it's your subject and not just the big broad area that you happen to operate in. So if you're in healthcare, which part of healthcare are you speaking about specifically? Because you want to be able to go out to podcasters and say you have this expertise in this particular subject. So think about that. You're, if you're starting to think about guest podcasting, exactly what do you want to talk about? What is the specific expertise? And are you prepared? And, and practice, you know, have a, have a friend pretend to be Oprah and ask you questions and just make sure that you can spontaneously respond on, the, on what, you, what is your subject matter expertise, because this is what you want to do to develop yourself as an interviewee. You, and I'm not going to talk about developing your pitch email, but that's critical as well. I will, in, in the context of, of talking about the different directories and how you find podcasts, I will mention some of the things you want to put in your pitch email. For equipment, a lot of people ask about microphones and cameras. I've seen podcasters request that you have a separate external microphone. Uh, a lot of them don't, but some people do. So that is a good investment. It is audio. And increasingly, even though it is audio, a lot of people are asking for you to be camera ready. We were joking about that earlier because they are putting their podcasts up on YouTube or other video services. So you'll want to also have your equipment. You want your good headshot and a bio for promotional purposes. And you want your promotion platforms to be set up like your social media and your email list, because this is going to be a marketing asset for you. I should also say you want to have a call to action so that should be set up as well. You want to be able to say at the end of the interview, you know, where could people reach you? You might have a lead magnet for them, something like that. So all of these things, I won't get into the details about them, but if you have any questions, just let me know. All of these things should be set up before you start actually guest podcasting. You don't have to do this before you start researching a podcast, which we'll talk about now, but you should get it done before you actually start accepting interviews. All right, how to find podcasts. So let's talk about first of all some of these free easy to use quick services that you can find that are out there that will help you get on podcasts quickly without the research process which i'll go through in a minute there is a service called radioguestlist.com i'm not affiliated with any of these i just know what they are this is one it's free to sign up and they do have a premium service and they just send you daily emails for people looking for interviewees so for example dare to be authentic radio is seeking guests you'll see this show up in your email and they're looking for a person with a story of how being authentic has helped enhance their life and the life of others i know a lot of people could probably speak on that podcast so this is what you would be thinking about because you might be a subject matter expert but then you'll see this and think oh maybe i could talk about authenticity and you can see they're looking for coaches and authors and therapists and mentors and teachers and so on so what would happen is you'll see a, a, an email like this you then send your pitch to that particular podcaster and see if they're interested. You also get very specific ones, you know, low carb ancestral living is looking for subject specific health experts. And there's that subject specific <laughs> request. So you could get, you see an email like that. Now the emails that come through on radioguestlist.com are sometimes they won't apply to you at all, but this is just something, a service you can quickly sign up for, start to see what people are asking for and see if there's anything there, anybody there that you would reach out to. There are also a lot of Facebook groups now, a lot of guest podcasting Facebook groups. This is a really, really, fast growing communication. You could tell, you know, this one podcast guest collaboration has 27,000, 28,000 members. Find a guest, be a guest. So people are just posting saying, I'm looking for a guest who speaks about this or 
I am somebody who speaks about that. And is there anybody interested in speaking to me and so on? So you can see if you go into Facebook and just put podcast guest or guest podcasting in search and all these different groups will come up. And that's a quick, again, a quick and easy way to see what's available, to see who is out there and to see what different shows that you could be appearing on. And the third one I want to mention is AI. The, the AI services, artificial intelligence services that have started to come up now for guest podcasting in the same way they came up for dating, you know, <laughs> you know a decade or so ago, or I guess it's more longer than that now. Uh, Podmatch.com is one. I'm partial to Podmatch because the CEO is on my show, but this one is, it's they use artificial intelligence to match you, hosts and guests, so you can put your profile in there. Again, it's free to, start, to set up and they offer for premium services. Guest.io is also free to set up, but they have premium services. And you just put your profile in, you put your information in, and pod hosts will reach out to you, and you'll see if there's an opportunity. So what I do, I'm in the service as both a guest and a host. And I will say that I get a lot more requests from other guests than I get for requests from hosts. But what you do is you put your profile in, people will be reaching out saying, I could be a guest on your show, uh, here's my expertise, here's my information, and you just look through it. And then I, what I do as a, as a host is send that potential guest the link to my form to fill out. And as a guest, I just have my information up there, and then I just wait, you know, see if the host will reach out to me. So those are, again, free services that you could get started with right away if you're interested in guest podcasting and jump right in. Now we'll get into the process that I use, which is what I call DIY guest podcasting, which is the deeper research process that using the podcast directories. How does a listener find a show? Well, right now it's word of mouth. I, there are blogs, you know, you could look up different things and, but really most people find out about podcasts through word of mouth. So what you're going to be doing as somebody who wants to be a guest on podcasts is actually research the shows. When people look at a podcast directory like Spotify, they can see the show and they can see the details. They can see a couple of lines about each episode. And that's what they're looking for. They're looking at that information at the top line, the subject, the, the, the description to see if it's an interesting show that they want to listen to. So as a guest, you, what you want, that's where you again want to really figure out what subject am I speaking on? Because if somebody's just glancing through a list in a directory, you want to get their attention and you also want to get the podcaster's attention with what you plan to speak about as well. So DIY guest podcasting is using the podcast directories to create a list of podcasts that you're going to then research and contact for an interview. So the process we're going to talk about is coming up with your keywords and we'll make this more interactive. We'll do some in real time. We'll look at the searching the preferred directory. So I mentioned, you know, most people will talk about Apple or Amazon or Spotify, the big names, but I'm going to show you the directories that are the better directories for you to search in because of the information they provide. And then contacting relevant shows for an interview, reaching out with emails saying, you know, you have some value to offer their audience and you'd like to be on the show. So we'll go through the process. So the first one is categories and keywords. So categories, on the podcast directories are very broad. This, so this is Apple, you know, you think about, for example, I showed you the example, the uh, low carb ancestral living. So where does that fall in a category? Is it health and fitness? Is it education? Could be science, could be society and culture. The categories are wide open. And so what you really want to get into is your keywords. How is a listener who's looking for your subject going to search? I start thinking about this and making some notes and then we could check some. Um, what are some of the words, that, what would a, a podcaster speaking on your subject name their show? That's what you want to do when you're thinking about keywords. What, what are the words that your industry uses? What are your products and services called? What search terms do you use? What are related podcasts called? Because you're going to need to use keywords. That, that, as I mentioned, the, the directory and search engines are not robust. So the keyword that you use is what would they have for the title of their show? What would they have in the description of their show? Because that tends to be how the directories are looking for words for shows when you enter a keyword. So what did for your industry, for, for the subject you want to speak on, what would you use? So I like to use the example of tulips. So if you speak on tulips, then your keywords go beyond the word tulip to 
flowers and plants and gardening and outdoor activity and different, you know, different things and anything that you can think of related to what you would speak about. Entrepreneurship, it could be small business, startup, side hustle, working from home, you know, affiliates, marketing, investment. So again, when you're thinking about your subject, what are the real keywords that you would be using? And then you're gonna put those keywords into the preferred directories. Now, so we're, we're, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna switch screens in a second to, to go and look at online and how, how this works, but this is what we're going to be looking for. And remember the idea is to find podcasts that are relevant for you to speak on because they cover your subject area. So when we do the search, there's a couple of things we're looking for. I have what, what I call initial search results is when you first put in a keyword, what does the directory show you? And there's gonna be two things that you want to really focus on. The first, surprisingly, is the last episode posted date. So not the description, check the last episode posted date first, because in that group of 2.7 million plus podcasts, a lot of them are not active. Probably the majority are not active. It's surprising the number of times people have put up just one episode, and that makes it a podcast that gets listed in every directory, but then it's, they don't do it anymore. And podcasters rarely have a final episode. Uh, it seems that a lot of them just decide to stop podcasting. So it's not you, looking at a show and looking at their list of episodes, if you don't see a final one there, doesn't necessarily mean it's over. This is a, a wide open industry. People are doing whatever they want. So I always look for that last episode posted date. If it's within the last six months and everything else looks great, it looks like a great show that I would still reach out to the podcaster to ask if they're doing their show. And you'd be surprised. Some people will say that they, oh yeah, they were just taking a break and they're actually still doing their show. And other people will say, no, they're finished. So I always check that first. Last episode posted date. And I'll show you what that looks like online. And then you show description. Then you're definitely looking to see what exactly is the the uh, show description that is going to be the one that you that is going to be something that you want to be speaking where you want to be speaking. And then there's a show page. Every directory I've seen has individual show pages for the podcast. So on the show page, we'll look at episode descriptions episode duration, and then links to the website, email, or the RSS feed, which is where we find the actual podcast podcaster's email address. Okay, so these are the things we're going to be looking for. And now I'm just going to stop sharing for a second because I'm going to switch screens. Are there any questions so far? Um, just contact information, okay, anything else? Where we go in, no, we're good, okay. So I'm just going to switch to the podcast directories. And now we'll go through the, the search process. Okay. And everybody can see, uh, hopefully, now you're looking at the, the internet. I've, I've got uplistednotes.com. Mm -hmm. I think you can see that. Okay. So podcast directories, as I mentioned, uh, the terms are sort of interchangeable. There's directories, platforms, apps, uh, all these different words that people use. But in general, anywhere that you can search for podcasts is what I'm calling a directory. And a lot of them you've ne probably never heard of compared to the, you know, the famous ones. You might not have heard of all these ones that I'm going to mention, but they're all valid in terms of what you want to do searching for podcasts as a potential guest. So listen notes, they call themselves the best podcast search engine, and I would agree. Uh, the only caveat is that it eventually goes behind a, a paywall. So listennotes.com is where I always say to start your search when looking for podcasts because of the information they have available. But the, the, you can always look at their, the um, names of podcasts and the descriptions and things like that. But after a while, it falls behind the paywall. So, and I've already called up the pages because I didn't want the delay on, on search. Um, so we're just gonna go through them. So if you would enter the word entrepreneur, they will show you the results. Now you have to be careful because there's episode results and there's podcast results. You want to make sure you're on the podcast tab. And you can see that they're highlighting where the word entrepreneur appears in the title or the description of a show. Okay, so that's what you're going to see what comes up. So you're somebody who wants to speak about entrepreneurship. You put entrepreneur in your in the search, you see the different shows that come up. Now, no, no podcast directory gives you all the information you want up front, but listen notes comes the closest. The only trouble is they only give you one line in the description. So you have to do a deeper search after that. But they do tell you the last last episode uploaded date. So a day ago, 
three days ago, a day ago. So that's good. You know that that's an active show. And you could check the first line of the description might not be enough, but you can see what categories the show is listed in. And that will give you an idea about whether or not you should research further. Okay, so that's the first step is to do that initial search on a particular keyword. Now, there's this other sites like Podknife. Oh, this way, Podknife.com. They show you. You can see that on listen notes, there were ten more than ten thousand results on Podknife. There's only seven hundred and fifty-one for a particular keyword. This is because not every podcast is listed on every directory. Some directories pull the podcast feeds themselves others require podcasters to actually put the information in so don't be surprised by that you'll see different information in different directories and you'll see the different layouts that in terms of which shows come up first but i'm pointing out podknife because podknife actually flags what they consider to be inactive or archived shows so they will have this or unavailable so they'll have a flag on there so you don't even bother to look at that particular show they don't have the last episode uploaded date, but they've got a couple of lines in the description. So if you're looking here, you can see there's so many shows that you would just skip right from the beginning because they're listed as inactive or unavailable. But again, so there's a, I just wanna make sure it's clear, as a podcast listener, it doesn't matter if the show is inactive because the episodes are still there, you can go back and listen to them. But as a potential guest, you must be looking at active shows because you want shows that you can reach out to to actually appear on. Okay, another one, digitalpodcast.com gives you the full description. So I'm showing you again, different directories give you different information. So I always say start with listen notes, but listen notes only gives you one line of the description, where if you digitalpodcast.com gives you the entire description, but the problem is, they don't tell you anything else. So you always have to go back and forth. The, you end up using a couple of different directories, but you could start with listen notes as one just to help you get some idea of the different types of shows. And I wanted to point out, you know, if you're looking for Tulip, it's your their results that they are giving you is if the word appears in the name, in the name of the show, the name of the podcaster, or then or in the description. So this podcaster's name is tulip so that's why it shows up there so you have to watch for that because it's a comedy show so you probably are not going to speak about you know the science of tulips on that show right so this is where you have to take it you have to be really aware of what you're looking at because the directories as i mentioned they're just going to throw you the information back at you for whatever ever, any keyword that you put in there but you then have to take a look at the details of the podcast to make sure that's the podcast you want to speak on and i'll show you on a on a show on a uh, on player fm player.fm when you are searching shows there they show you the tags the tags that are entered by the podcaster and what's great about that is then what they do is if you click on any of the tags it takes you to all of the shows where the podcaster has entered that particular category that particular tag so what that means is if you have, especially if you have, you know, there's a lot of entrepreneur podcasts, but if you have a more obscure topic and you enter that word in player.fm and it will give you, for every tag that's out there, it will give you a page like this of every single podcast that is using that word. And what's great about that is then you're not dependent on the podcaster having used the word in the title or the description. It's only there if the if if the podcaster is using that word as a way to describe their show, and it's you know some more obscure word around what you're doing, then that's a great opportunity. You probably say, okay, that's probably that podcaster is probably speaking about what I speak about. So that gives you that chance to just you'll be able to find all the podcasts listed under that word. And again, though, qualifying that not every podcast appears in every directory. So Player FM does not have as long a list as Listen Notes has but it's a great way to capture a whole bunch of podcasts. You can see here, like these podcasts don't have the word entrepreneur in the title, but they are entrepreneur podcasts. Okay, so I hope that's clear. Just check here for a question. Best way to promote your podcast. Yes, we'll talk about that as I get to, uh, because that is absolutely what you want to be doing once you start interviewing. And then I just want to point out Apple Pod. So I mentioned that Apple is not the best place to search, but the Apple Podcast page that you can get 
the desktop version of the page is one of the better ones to look at when you're looking at individual shows. And to get to this page, you actually in, in your Google search bar put the name of the podcast and then the words Apple Podcasts after it. So just put down any podcast and put Apple Podcasts. And that will then take you to this page up, up for the actual show. And why it's valuable is because they have the what I think is the longest sort of three show three lines showing of the description of the show most people don't show you that so you have you get the description of the show but then the description of every episode i mean so what this does for you is that allows you to see if they're actually doing interviews and it even gives you a little bit more information about the interview so i like looking at the apple podcast page because that will show you not just the description of the show but the description of the episodes and that will give you a sense of whether or not those interviews are really good interviews a lot of people might have interviews maybe they're doing five minute interviews or something like that which might not be what you want to speak about but if you can see that the duration is 30 minutes or 45 minutes or something like that then you know it's a good interview show and that's a good one to reach out to and i also want to flag be very careful with the names of podcasts because podcasts all they can all they can have the same name they can have names that are similar so there's this boss lady podcast then there's that boss lady podcast and then there's the boss energy ladies and then there, then there's boss you know boss ladies with Olivia and so you have to make sure you're always picking the exact name and I actually use I go back to Apple and I will use the Apple however the name appears most people are in apple so however the name appears in the apple podcast page that is how i will record it for myself and reach out to the podcast or whatever they have up here at the top because here is where they'll put you know with so and so or by so and so or something like that they'll make the the actual full name of the podcast will appear on the apple podcast page and then just copy it exactly so that you don't end up mixing them up because a lot of shows can have the same name and side hustle is another one that comes you know there's side hustle nation side hustle school side hustle show side hustle project side hustle pro so you don't you, if you are reaching out to a podcaster you do not want to put the wrong name right because that's a completely different show so just make sure you copy the name exactly as it shows up it's, that's really important you'd be surprised at how often that comes up Okay, so that's when you do the initial search. So initial search, you remember, is going to the page in the directory, entering your keyword, a whole long list of podcasts comes up, you check the last episode uploaded date, you check the description, you say, okay, that's the show I want, and then you go into the show page. And the show page is where you then check the episodes, because you want to see that they do interviews. So you can look at the description, if the word interview appears in the description, then they, you know, they most likely do interviews. <laughs> Sometimes they don't, I mean, even though they put it in there, they might've had the intention of doing it. And so you have an opportunity then you can just, that looks like a good show. If the description sounds like what you talk about, if the episodes look like things that you want to be speaking about, that's the show that you want to reach out to then and find their contact information. Now, as I meant, so Listen Notes actually has this upfront, the website link, the email link, but as I mentioned, it, it falls behind a paywall after a while. So you can you can check those a couple of times, but then after a while you can't anymore. And I'll show you some of the sites that are, do not have have do not have a paywall. So you can find that information more directly. What you want to do is go to the website because you want to find information there for the contact or just get their email address and then be able to send your pitch directly to them from there. So as I meant, so listen notes, when you first start searching, you'll be able to click on these buttons, but after a while you won't. But you want to check, always, always, always check the episode information to make sure that the type of episodes they're doing are the things that you want to be speaking about. Okay, that's really important. You, when you're looking at, as I mentioned, because sometimes they might be an interview show, but then they don't really do long interviews, they don't do any kind of in-depth interviews, or they it maybe just not what you thought it was going to be. You should also be aware, I should say that you there might be things you don't want to talk about. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I don't like explicit language warnings. Some shows have explicit language warnings, that type of thing. So if you don't like that, if that's not the type of thing you want to talk about, you'll see that when you're looking at the episodes, when you're looking at the actual show page, and you can get more information that way. Okay. So uh, just get, I'm uh, just checking 
questions? Okay. I'll come back to those. And I want to point out the difference also if you I don't know if you if there's a long description, you might know this trick on online if you hit control F, you can search for any word on on the page. So you could search for the word interview to see if it appears. And then you know that that's a show that does interviews. But if you compare compare that to a show that doesn't have the word interview in the description, but you can clearly see like on Trailblazers Impact, you can clearly see that every episode is an interview. So that's, I guess, just you want to be able to look at that and you can clearly see the titles and the little description. So you know, okay, this is a show that I want to reach out to. Now, I'm going to show you now the directories that actually have links to the website. You can always go directly online, by the way. So I'm, I'm showing you the directories that have links to the website, links to email, makes it easier. But you could always just go directly online and put the name of the podcast in search and watch for the you know the app the podcast website to come up that way or the podcasters website to come up that way you don't always have you don't have to use the directories for this information but it's just easier if they happen to have it so on podknife podknife is one of the ones that gives you free access to the links to their to the website so that's a little home to the RSS feed, which I'll talk about in a second, for the email and to social media. And what's interesting, I, I like this one because I don't know where podcast uh, Podknife got my email from, which is, it's not the email that I actually have my podcast registered under. So I thought that was interesting, but they do have that link there. So this is one way when you're searching for podcasts, let's say you're looking and you can't find, so you go, so then you could come into Podknife, see if the podcast listed there. Remember, it's not always listed there. See if it's listed there, see if they've got the links. The links will only appear, of course, if the podcaster has made that information available, with the exception of the RSS feed. Just, to, and I'll just quickly say, the RSS feed, you don't have to worry about what is just the, the URL that is used by the industry to distribute the podcast. And that, in, that link has in it, in the coding, it has an email. And some sites make it possible for you to see the code so then you can find the email. So that's why it, it's just another way of finding the email. I don't know if a lot of, and, and, but not every podcaster makes that available. It's not like, the, again, the industry is wide open. So there's no rules around things like that, but it's another way to find the, a, a, an email address for the podcaster, but it might not always be available. Okay. Now, let me just move the, uh, there we go. And tune in, that's just another one I want to show you, tunein.com, which also has links to websites and emails and, and that information, social media, they make it available if the podcaster has made it available. So this is when you are, you've looked at the podcast, you've looked for the particular one, you think it looks like a great show, looks like a great opportunity for you. Now you're gonna find the contact information. Okay. And digitalpodcast.com, they also, have links. So these are the ones that provide free links to the website and to the RSS feed. And another good one is Podbay. And just to show that, so Podbay is, is a terrible site when you're looking for shows, because all they do is show you the graphic and they don't even show you sometimes the entire show name, but they have great show pages. So this is the challenge, as I mentioned before, is the directories are just kind of a little bit all over the place. And some are really good and some are not that great, but Podbay, podbay.fm has a really good show page also with a link to the website and the RSS feed. And it has more information on the about page, tip, available episodes, that type of thing, you know, last release date. So when you you just pick the pod the the directories that are the best for you the ones that you really like the ones that you think where you can really you know if you if you up you up using it some of these um podcast apps for other things anyway so just pick the one that you like but this, just want to point out the ones that actually have this information available for free and then the reason you want to go to the actual website is because a lot of podcasters nowadays have a guest request form. And I'm going to talk about this in a second, that you, the, what, the way that you want to reach out to podcasters is to use the method that they want you to reach to them first. And for many, that's a guest request form. So for example, I know the Trailblazers Impact, when you go onto their website, if you go to the about section, connect, what you see is 
you know, it specifically says, want to be a guest on the Trailblazers Impact podcast show, click here. That's what a lot of people have done now. They've made a form that you have to fill out their form because they want this information up front. So you should always go to the website to see if they have an actual form for you to complete. Because, because the last thing a podcaster wants is just cold emails. And some of them might be ignoring, if they just get cold emails all the time, they might actually just ignore that because that's not what they want. You know, They don't want to actually receive that. They want you to use the form. So go to the website first to look for a form. Okay, I'm going to switch the screens again. So let me go back and I'll just quickly check any questions. Uh, let's see. Maria asks, how do I ensure my podcast is in all the directories you talk? About? Oh, yeah. So it's you actually have to go to them one by one. Um, if you if you have so there's two your hosting company, wherever your podcast is hosted, they automatically send your feed out and they should tell you exactly which directories they've sent your feed to. But there are other directories that require you to go just one by one into them. And what I would do is check. Um, you can actually check them all. There's not there's a few lists that are available that are there. I have a list of, of, of directories and you can just check them all one by one. But um, the other thing is if you notice a directory that's out there, if you're looking at other people's podcasts, this is how I found out there are so many directories. I've, I've discovered more than 80 directories and it's from searching for people's podcasts. And then I see what comes up in Google search is that the podcast is listed in all these different places. And that's how I found out that there were different directories. Um, with regard to names, uh, when it's worthwhile to trademark the name of a podcast. Oh, Susan. Oh, so, so when is it worthwhile? Yeah, I don't, you know, that's, that's a Susan question, I think in terms of, but I definitely right now what's happening is that podcasters just name their shows, whatever they want. And many of them do have this exact, some have the exact same name and many of them might be exact, but, but I mentioned that they might put something like with, them, and then they put their name or something like that, or, you know, case lanes, ready entrepreneur podcast. They, so they'll to differentiate it that way, but that's why you have to be really careful because a lot of the shows do look like they have the same name. All right, and some uh, some podcasts are produced by companies. The only way to contact is through the producer. Is that worthwhile? Yeah, some of the podcasts, especially the big name podcasts, they are you know they hide themselves very well. It's very hard to find an email address for them, and they are some produced by companies. Now there's a lot of podcast networks, but it is absolutely worthwhile to get you know as I mentioned, what we're doing here is getting beyond the top 100 because you know you speak about so many different subjects, and the best thing to do is to try and get on as many podcasts as you can to speak about your subject and reach out to those audiences. But no doubt getting a chance to participate on one of the big name podcasts, uh, if you know, if the former first lady wants to interview you for her podcast on Michelle Obama's show, then yeah, of course, that would be fantastic. Uh, but it'd be a lot harder to get in there. They're not going to make their email publicly available and you could just reach out. So I think what you want to do is if you if you see a show that's just a top level, top 100 show, tens of millions of listeners, but they, you know, there's a subject that you speak on that you're absolutely certain that they'd want to speak about. And you want to reach out to them. I certainly encourage you to do. I think we absolutely should go for the top 100 for sure. And you probably, you know, you could start reaching out. You might have to do it through social media. You might have to sort of DM them a few times, that type of thing. But I definitely, yeah, I, I definitely think it's worth it to get on the big shows as well as, you know, the rest of the list of the top, you know, the, the, the top 2 million. <laughs> All right, let me quickly go back. I've got a couple more things to share. I don't want us to run out of time, but I do want to go through the process quickly um, for contacting shows. So I mentioned you want to check the, the first thing you want to do is check the website for a guest request form because that's what the podcaster has set up. You want to then, um, if that's not available, then look for the email from the directory, as I pointed out to you. You can look at the different directories and see if there's an email address there. And it's any kind of email address. It doesn't have to be, you know, specifically the podcast. If they have an info at, you know, type of email address, that's fine. You could then, if it's, there's nothing there for the directories, see if there's an email on the website. Even the support email, maybe um, just be careful. Sometimes if the website is directed towards their clients and that's the client contact email, that's not where they're going to want to see a pitch for their show. So just take a look though and see if there's any kind of email address on the website. If there's nothing there, check them if they have a website contact form. You know how sometimes people just have that very generic form that says contact us. I've put pitches right directly in there. Just copy and paste your pitch directly in there and put in the subject line, 
you know, request to be on the show or something like that. And then you could find the email in the RSS feed. I talked about this a bit. The RSS feed is, is code, but it's publicly available code. So you, what you would do is just, I mean, you can actually, well, actually, you can use the control F. The, you know, it's and the my phone. Oh, somebody's, uh, somebody's talking. <laughs> you can be on mute. Don't forget to mute your microphone. For the week, huh? When you go back. I'm not sure who that is. Okay. Um, and so find the email in the RSS feed. And then the last wow. one is social media. So what you want to do with social media, as I mentioned, you can reach out, you can DM them. I'm not, you know, podcasters would take this differently. Some podcasters probably do not mind having you reach out to them on social media, whereas others might find it annoying or something like that. But if you are pursuing that podcaster, if you think you would be great on that show, then that is, you know, a, a way that you can actually start interacting with them, letting them know that you're following them, that you saw something. Even one of the things that I think is so great is if you, when you're doing your research, make sure again, you look at the episodes, see what they're talking about. If they are talking about something you speak about, but they spoke there, you know, they spoke about the X version out of it and you speak about the Y version of it. That's a great thing to go back to the podcaster and say, Hey, I really enjoyed that interview with so-and-so, by the way, I speak about this, which your audience may also enjoy. That then shows that you've actually paid attention <laughs> to what they're doing and that you have valuable information for their audience, because that's what it comes down to in the end, is that you have valuable information to offer their audience. And then you can present that and you both, it's a win-win for both sides, right? The podcaster gets a great guest who's giving their audience new information and you as a guest get that great audience that's actually interested in your information. As I mentioned, this is an audience that's coming to you and looking for you. And it's just, so much more effective than what you get with paid ads or, or organic. And then after the interview, so we talked about this a bit, how do you promote? Uh, so you want to, you're building direct connections with your industry. You could be a referred guest to other shows. You're, you're developing your insight into all the subjects. You can have future collaborations with, the, as, you know, be a guest speaker at micro, uh, Masterminds. Um, you can co-coach, do online training, do joint webinars. The first line of promotion, of course, is, for most people is social media, simply posting about the episode on social media, letting people that you know you're on it, tagging the podcaster, tagging their show, really important to make sure that they know you're promoting the show as well. If you have an email list, reach out to your email list, let them know it's out there, but then leverage that episode to do all these other things. Build that connection to that podcaster who's in your industry, somebody you know that's already interested. See what other things that they're doing. Maybe you could do a joint webinar. I, I, Anita's on the call. Anita is a, is a great friend of mine who I met through this guest podcasting process. She, her show is Be Great Global. And I had the great honor of being on that show. And we ended up collaborating on online trading and other things. So you never know what's going to happen when you actually use a process like this. If you pay an agency, if you want to do guest podcasting and you're paying an agency, you know, 500 bucks a month, a thousand bucks a month, something like that, you don't even know what they're doing. They they might get you, I get e emails all the time from agencies and none of them are aimed at what I talk about on my show with interviewees, which is their entrepreneur, entrepreneurial journey. So if you do it yourself and you actually go through this process, do the research, reach out to podcasters, research their shows, make your pitch email really tailored to their show. It's so much more effective. And, and I think it would give you just so many more opportunities to be on different shows. And you own the, the search for your, for your name on Google. <laughs> you know, you put your name and we're podcast interviews and all sorts of uh, listings will come up and you'll own that first page. As I mentioned, you can really leverage the SEO and the social media presence and just being more visible online. So that now it's your turn. <laughs> so this is the process. Finalize your keywords. Um, I know we're running out of time, so we won't get to do some of them, but you use the preferred directories, create your list of potentially relevant shows, research contact information and keep track of your results. You don't want to be hitting the same podcaster every week saying, hey, I want to be on your show. I always give them a good three months to respond because a lot, I know a lot of podcasters get a lot of uh, requests. And I do have a summary checklist for you of the steps I just went through. You can go ahead and download this. It's that free download. Just um, it's at success.podcastgetstar.com forward slash checklist. And it's just something you can have beside you. It, goes, it has all the steps that I just talked about. So just a reminder to you of what the different steps are that you can actually just go through and check that. Okay, so I do want to leave time 
for a couple of questions. I can see that some have come up. And so everybody's got, I just want to make sure you get that um, link. Everybody's got the link, you screenshot it. And if you have any questions, I do have a couple, I, I saw in the, the email that's in the chat is fine, case lane at readyentrepreneur.com. And I also have a couple of other emails. And for guest podcasting, I have at guest podcasting on Facebook and Instagram. That's where I post about the latest and greatest things on, on uh, guest podcasting. So at guest podcasting on both Facebook and Instagram. Okay. So I'm going to come back. And let me see. Um, let's see. I just want to check quickly on questions. There, yeah. So this year, this will be up on YouTube on First Powers of YouTube. Yes. Yeah, so if you've, if you've joined us late, any suggestions on how to respond to guest requests that are not a good fit? Yeah, most podcasters don't respond. <laughs> That's the polite way. <laughs> um, sometimes people now, some people are, are mean and they actually respond to say, why did you write to me? That's horrible. I, you don't have good, you're not a good fit. You did, you know, but I think the best thing is just not respond. I think people who are reaching out and as like somebody who's a potential guest, don't be um, offended if somebody does not get back to you because, you know, podcast, like I mentioned, I, as a podcast host, I get so many requests none of them not like zero have, have actually said they want to speak about an entrepreneurial journey even though if you look at my podcast that's what i talk about in interviews is the entrepreneurial journey and i've never received a request that said that so podcasters get really frustrated with agencies that are just sending out blank you know sort of global requests be very careful about saying hey i'm the greatest person of all time here are all my credentials i know this i'm wonderful i'm fabulous and you've not said a word about what you're going to offer their audience so that's why I say do this DIY process, look at their podcast, do your research, really tailor your email to their audience and say, I, you know, your episode 27 talked about this, but I've got a really good idea. Your audience would enjoy that. That is just so much more valuable for podcasters. And it's valuable for you as well, because as I mentioned, this is a permanent marketing asset that you can send people to all the time. And you can say, hey, if you want to hear me talk about this, I did it on this show or that show. And it's just, it's so valuable to have it. So it's best to just from the beginning to make it worthwhile for both you and the podcaster. Well, excellent job, Case. Any <laughs> I, know, questions? I know we're, I know we're running out of time, just double checking <laughs> questions as well. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so I hopefully I, I caught every question, did I? Mm -hmm. I okay, did. okay, good, good. Okay, okay, terrific job. Hey, thank you so much for being here. I got a lot out of this myself. So um, thanks again. And thank and you. It's great. I hope everybody can join us. We do this every Friday at 10 Central. Uh, because the holidays are coming up, we're going to go ahead and do a, a holiday party next uh, Friday at 10 Central. Please wear your ugly Christmas sweater or holiday sweater. Appreciate it. And we'll have a little fun. Um, just want to let you know what's coming up. So we've got that uh, on the 17th. The 24th is our holiday break. And then on the 31st, I have Sally Wagner coming, and she is a sought after international speaker, best selling author, lawyer, real estate broker. And she's going to be talking about the three techniques we can use to develop a system that will keep us focused on accomplishing our goals. Mm -hmm. I thought that, that was a pretty good thing to have at the end of the year. Yeah. So, um, any final comments from you, Case? No, thank you very much, Donna. I really appreciate it. Thanks for everyone. Thanks for all your questions. And, and uh, I see that. Thank you for all the, <laughs> for the uh, kind comments. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, everybody. And, and I would be interested in how you feel about this format. We normally have recorded the programs and we're trying to do that just so that we could have everybody on mute and just do a high quality job of the posting. But I think it's it's fun also to have this kind of engaging way of doing this. So I'd love to hear your feedback on that. Uh, please sign up for a directory listing if you haven't already. Um, like and share our social media pages, please. Let your friends know about this broadcast. And um, please remember, purse power, we have it. Let's use it. Hope to see you next Friday. Take care, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.